This is a 2019 Chevrolet Corvette Grand Sport Coupe. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys in a Ride. Ride. Today we're taking a look at this beautiful 2019 Chevrolet Corvette. This is the Grand Sport Coupe. But hey, if you want to keep up to date with uh, new cars, trucks, SUVs, and you want to know all the latest vehicle technologies and you love cool collector cars, take a second to hit that subscribe button below and ring that bell notification so you never miss a video. So what do you say, Nathan? Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. Today we're with our friends at Mankato Motors selling Chevrolet automobiles like this beautiful Corvette in Mankato, Minnesota. So today is a real treat. I am in the 2019 Corvette Grand Sport Edition. And man oh man, I'll tell you what a what a drive. Um, the steering in here is just so precise. And every time you change modes, it is it, it, the exhaust and the steering and the, the throttle all just respond instantaneously. Um, just a crazy feeling. I absolutely love it. Now, um, the heads up display in here is just amazing. Um, and of course, you have several features on there, which I'll be able to show you a little bit later. And uh, we got to make a turn here. So just hang on a second. Oh, we got to stop. Okay, I guess I'll just go straight. Alright, uh, so we're going to try a little uh, 0 to 60 here and uh, see what kind of time that we have. So uh, we'll have to get to, I got to get to a spot first here, but oh, I just hear that exhaust purr. I absolutely love it. I love it, love it, love it. Hey, what? Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm driving my Corvette. Um, no, you're not. <laughs> Isn't that moving? We're supposed to go for a ride and you left me, but actually today, folks, we're not actually going for a ride because oh. uh, these are pretty expensive cars and pretty cool collector cars, uh, future yeah. collectible. So um, people don't like to buy these with a lot of miles on them. So we are honoring uh, the future owner and the dealer, and we're not actually yeah. taking this one for a test drive today, but we are going to give you a full review of the inside and the outside as usual. Uh, but you know, Nathan, I, I take off to go grab something to drink, and you go and leave me. I really appreciate that, man. But you <laughs> well, know I what? didn't leave you far, did I? I, I had the B roll running, and it got you. We captured you. <laughs> oh, so we I not actually to fool people. Right? Nope. Nope. Uh, we tried. I know. Gone, but yeah. all right. So coming up next is Rob's review of the exterior. With the power of the legendary LT1 V8 engine and many of the aerodynamic components found on the Z06, Grand Sport provides the perfect combination of power and handling to make you feel closer to the road than ever before. Now this vehicle starts at $65,900 and I think this one is uh, actually stickered a little bit over $72,000 as we see it here. This is powered by an aluminum 6.2 V8 engine with a dry sump oil system. Packs 460 horsepower, 465 pound-feet of torque, and there's either a 7-speed manual transmission or an 8-speed paddle shift automatic. Uh, in case you're wondering about that automatic and if she'll move down the road, with that 460 horsepower, you're looking at 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. Now on the front and rear, you have Brembo Performance Anti-Lock Brakes. Large two-piece steel rotors up front measure 14.6 inches. 
Uh, and in the back, you've got 14.4 inches. So with all that go, you need some good stopping and those big rotors will definitely handle that. You do have performance traction management, active handling stability control with traction control. Now, out front, you do have the highly visible and reliable uh, LED park and turn signals and you have high intensity discharge headlights. Body colored carbon fiber roof panel, which we don't have to show you right now because we do have the top off. It's such a beautiful day. Uh, we wanted to show it in all its glory with the top panel off of there. You do have body colored heated drive side, driver side, auto dimming power outside mirrors. And on this, you have the Grand Sport standard performance equipment, which has specific front fender inserts. Show you those right here. It's got the Grand Sport badging on it as well. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Love it. It's beautiful. You've got the front splitter. Specific Grand Sport cup style wheels. And folks, those are absolutely fantastic. Love them. Uh, Michelin Pilot Super Sport Summer Tires only as well because this baby handles and you want all that rubber gripping as much as possible. Uh, six piston um, Brembo brakes as I said before. Uh, you've got magnetic selective ride control and electronic limited slip. This vehicle does ride on an aluminum frame. Now up front you have 19 inch front and 20 inch rear pearl nickel painted aluminum Grand Sport wheels with summer tires as I said and those are Michelin Pilot uh, 19 inch and 20 inch summer only and the front measure 19 by 10 the rear are 20 by 12 and I'll show you that in a minute there's there's a lot of meat on the rubber of the back of this this vehicle rear axle is 3.42 ratio with electronic limited slip does have performance exhaust Fuel tank capacity is 18.5 gallons. Fuel economy, 16 city, 25 highway. Show you out back here with these uh, beautiful tail lights. You got the, the blade spoiler out back. Looks fantastic. And you see the four exhaust coming out the tail end there. Woof. <laughs> this boy will speak to you. I love it. Absolutely love it. It's beautiful. On the wheelbase of this vehicle, you're looking at 106.7 inches. Overall length, 177.9 inches. With, with, without the mirrors, 77.4. Overall height, 48.6 inches. Track width on the front, 63 and a half inches. Track width out back is 62.5 inches. Trunk volume is 15 cubic feet and then the base curb weight is 3,480 pounds. And you see the top stores nicely in there, and then of course under that you've got 15 cubic feet of space, and it's just, just beautiful. I love it. I love the way it fits. I was telling Nathan earlier when this vehicle came out, this, this body style generation came out, I wasn't quite sold on it. I thought it had too many uh, straight lines and was too angular, but man, oh man, I absolutely love it now. It's just beautiful. And I think with the new mid-engine Corvette coming out, the prices on these are going to appreciate uh, even more so because it is the last of the breed. Now on the body itself, uh, you've got some beautiful lines on it. There's just so many. I love the little side skirts down below here. You've got the, uh, it's not carbon fiber, but it's black and it's uh, gloss black. You do have the air intakes there and you've got air cooling here and you've got the exhaust intakes to, for engine cooling up front. And it's just, uh, you know, I'll just give you a quick view of the interior. Nathan's going to give you a whole complete review of that. But it's just a beautiful car. I love the styling around the intakes. And I love that uh, Grand Sport badging. And these wheels, they're beautiful. Front headlights, the front grille. Um, <laughs> there's not an ugly angle on this car. I don't think. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's going to be hard to kind of get you around to this side. I'll try to show you. Uh, we got the sun it's going to cast shadows, so hopefully this is coming out pretty good that you can see it. But you see it's just a beautiful one. I love the tail end. I love the styling right there. That's just fantastic. Love it. Beautiful car. 
All right, Nathan, I know you've been waiting, chomping at the bit to get inside and play with this car a little bit more and show folks what's in there. Yeah, yeah. Ready? He, he's a happy camper. Are you done? We're ready. I see you wore your blue hat to match the car. That's awesome. <laughs> I did. I knew I was doing a blue car today. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, so Nathan, take it away. Show everybody the technology and features on the inside and go have fun, buddy. Welcome to my Corvette. All right. Stepping into the 2019 Corvette Grand Sport Edition on the driver's side here. We have beautiful leather, nice white contrasting stitching. And down here we have a two-person uh, memory setting for the seats. You have an easy exit button here. You've got your power lock and lock buttons. You've got your Bose sound system. you got two speakers in the door. Auto up and down for both the uh, passenger and driver windows. You got that nice grab through handle and you got some storage down here and uh, on Corvettes the door handles are push button. So you do have a push button here in case of a battery failure or something else you do have on both sides a manual uh, button that you just pull to release the door. All right. You have eight-way power seats on both sides, and the way it works here is this button go, makes the seat, tire seat shift uh, up and then back, and then this one tilts the back part up and down. Okay, and then you have this part here that is just your, you know, your reclines your, your uh, back of your seat, and then the last button here, of course, is your lumbar. The seats are Mulan leather. They are perforated, heated, and cooled seats. I love the Corvette symbol right here. The accented, again, white stitching. And then the little pass-through right here. Uh, I like that design. All right, moving on up from the driver's seat. Underneath the dash, you've got your foot rest. You've got, your, of course, your normal pedals. I like the, the, the little... Um, Looks like stainless steel inserts onto the gas and, and accelerator, uh, accelerator and brake pedals. Now, over here, underneath here, you've got a trunk release button, and then this is your motion sensor button, uh, so that uh, the vehicle has uh, motion sensing, both uh, horizontal and vertical, so if the vehicle is lifted or moved left or right without your permission or knowledge, uh, the alarms will go off, and then it also senses motion um, in the car. So that's part of your security system, and currently that is off. Now moving up here, you got left to right mirror selectors and your cursors. And then uh, over to the right of that, you've got your heads up display. So the first button here uh, will raise or lower the heads up display. The second button will give you info, like what shows on the screen. And then the third button on the right, it determines the brightness of the HUD display. Then up right above that, you have a rotary dial. That is to set your uh, the bright brightness of your dashboard. All right, so let's, um, let's, uh, let's take a step in here and start it up. And I love this way this digital screen just kind of fades on. I also love it when gauges move when you start them up just to show you that they're working. All right, so uh, there is a dashboard with a very, very nice digital display in the middle. Um, it's, it's very, very nice. Um, so uh, let's, you can adjust what you can see in um, that display area by using some of the controls on the steering wheel. So let's back up for a second here and we'll start on the right side. This is what you use to control the driver's information system. So, so you're gonna notice that there is an up arrow right here, a down arrow, and then way over on the left, there's another arrow going left. So the uh, Chevrolet put these puts these in to indicate where you can, which buttons you can push on the steering wheel to access information. So I'm going to push first the left arrow. And you notice there's a bunch of stuff that pops up and I can use my up and down arrows to select. So let's just go through what's there first. So if I type, if I push OK or the select button, you'll notice the information in the middle changes. So now I have my RPM gauge and I've got my miles per hour and I have got two arrows up and down. Then I've got two little dashes here and on the other side that will move as I rotate through screen. So here we go. Trip A, trip B, fuel range, instant fuel economy, oil life. Now one of the interesting things about the oil life monitoring system on this car uh, is that it actually monitors your personal driving habits and the climate conditions 
to determine when you're supposed to change your oil and filter. Tire pressure. Best average economy. Uh, fuel used and a timer. And of course, it will read speed limit signs. And then engine hours and lifetime revs. And then you're back to this screen. All right, let's go left again to this main menu. Let's go down to performance. And let's see what happens. Now we get a bunch of different gauges. And I'm, again, I'm gonna use the uh, down and up arrows. So we got battery voltage. You've got transmission fluid temperature, horsepower, uh, tire temperature. You have got uh, wheel slip. You have got a really cool gauge here with the, now the, the needle for the RPM. Okay. And then you have got G-forces. And then, uh, yep, you, I'm not sure what they call this screen. Um, but as you're driving, I think it helps to indicate um, the G-force on the car. So it will be a little dot that appears and moves around. Kind of like a radar scope. Okay, uh, accelerate to start. You got a performance timer here. And then we're back to a coolant temperature and then oil temperature, oil pressure, and then back to battery voltage finally. Okay, you notice that we are in track mode right now and I'll show you those modes in, in a minute. But let's go back left and we're gonna go down to audio. If I click on this one, now all my audio information appears in here. Okay, if I go to my right arrow, I can, can't really see that because of the glare. Well, okay, so it says radio or media. So if I hit my right arrow again, now I can select. Of course, this does, it, this infotainment system is a 10 speaker Bose system and it's got Android uh, Auto and Apple CarPlay on as well as Bluetooth. Okay, and now if I go back to my left, I can go down to phone now. There is no phone connected, but if there was, you could have you. This is where you could uh, see what options you have. I'm gonna go left again. Go down to navigation. I don't have anything programmed in the navigation. This car does come with navigation, but if it did, it would. The directions would show up in here. Okay. Now I'm gonna go down to options, and this is where you can change things like uh, what what measurement system you're using. Uh, the display theme that you want, um, speed warning, that'll warn you if you go over a certain speed, oil pressure, um, your like pocket gauges they call them, okay? Heads up display, there's some things that you can uh, change in here. Uh, and basically what you can do here is rotate it to the left or to the right, like you're twisting it. So it, you can customize it um, to your display. Okay, so very quickly, just to show you how to adjust that heads-up display, okay? If I go in here with my left button on the right side of my steering wheel, using the left button, and I go down to Options, and I click OK, or the Select button, and I, I'll scroll through this menu until I get to heads-up display. Then I'm gonna click the right arrow, and now I can tilt or um, move that display now i'm gonna try to show you but again i you can you can barely see it right there but you can see a little bit so let me uh let me tilt it a little bit for you see if that works okay there we go that's a little bit better it's it's um okay if i can go there and i can confirm it Okay, now I've tilted a little bit. So it's minor changes, but it is nice uh, from the driver's perspective when you're sitting in the vehicle. It actually makes a difference. Okay, so the graphics will change a little bit. So in track mode here, I've got this really cool RPM gauge. See that climb a little bit? Oh, that sounds good. Okay, and I can go back here to sport mode. And then it changes again. I can then go back here, tour, takes off the little gauge, gives you this picture. Weather. So weather and economy and, tra and tour all sort of pretty much have the same display. All right. Now, let's talk about the other buttons on the steering wheel.
over here you have cruise control on and the button is a it's a right side push it doesn't push on the left but if you push it on the right you'll see the cruise control indicator come on and then over here of course you have your cancel set and resume you do have of course paddle shifters leather colors covered steering wheel i like the flat bottom and i love of course the corvette symbol right in the middle all right moving on over to the right you just got your uh, indicator for your airbag on the passenger side your hazard button and then on the infotainment center you do have a few physical buttons you've got your power on off your volume you've got of course uh, uh, one single button to go to the radio another button to select what kind of media that you're going to play okay from your phone or uh, sd card or something and then of course you have your home screen i do like the way that this one is colored i really like that screen and of course you have of course a, a go back a track go forward a track or a radio station and then just a back button on the navs on the screen itself and then down here you've got a menu button and you've got a rotary dial that, as you can see as i go through it selects different icons so if i want to know about settings i just go there and i click and up it comes so you can control all this manually and by the way uh when you're in park it's located very nice to the close to the shifter so you can just rest your hand on there. But you can affect things like, uh, uh, let's see where you go, date and time driving mode, language, and put it in valet mode, um, set the settings for valet mode, radio, vehicle, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, voice control, display, that kind of stuff. Okay, now I'm just going to push my back button, which is right up here, and the screen goes back. Let's take a look at the navigation. Uh, so if I twist my, uh, there we go. So right now we're just in a parking lot, and of course this has a plastic cover on I don't want to remove. Um, so the X is not actually on the map, of course. This vehicle does come with OnStar, as well it is capable of having Chevrolet connected services with it, and it does have a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot. It also comes equipped with a rear view backup camera with dynamic guidelines. Okay, then moving down to the climate control system here. Uh, this is dual zone climate control. The driver's uh, settings are over here, so you can kind of rotate it, or it sets it for the whole vehicle, of course. Okay? But if you passenger wants to adjust theirs, there is no button right here to do that. Instead, they've given them their own buttons right over here, along with heated and cooled seats. Okay? Now, strangely enough, the passenger also has uh, ventilated and heated seats right here so they have two ways they can turn their ventilated and heated seats on of course if you want temperature to be the same you just hit that sync button okay and then your recirculatory button right down here now i know um rob's probably going to point this out because he pointed it out to me i had not noticed it but right here on this grand sport badge this is actually a corvette all right moving on back this is an eight speed automatic shift uh, and uh, it just has uh, the lights. You just pull the shifter in the back, and if you want to go into manual mode, you can go up there, and, of course, the screen gives you the manual changes, and, of course, you can change gears with the, uh, with the paddle shifters. I already talked about the mode select button right here. This is your traction control on or off, and then you have your emergency brake right here which is simply a pull up to activate and then a push down to deactivate. Over here, you've got two nice cup holders. You can close that lid if you want it. And then moving up here, you have a 12 volt outlet. It just pops really nicely up and down. It's a nice damp and feel. Over here, you've got a nice little grab handle for the passenger, okay? And let's take a look at the uh, center console here, storage, okay? now. And this, this is, this is uh, about a, uh, two hands deep, okay? So not, not a real deep area, but you got a spot to store uh, pencils, uh, pens, a phone, something. You do have a 12-volt outlet right here. You do have two USB uh, ports here that will connect you to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, as well as uh, a 3.5-millimeter audio jack. Okay? Now, this has... An interesting feature both on the glove box and here but I right here where it says screen if I push this the whole screen lowers 
okay? And I can uh, store things back here, and this can lock, okay? Push that button, it comes right back up, so it's hidden. All right. So now, down here in the glove compartment, which is, it can lock electronically, you do have an SD card slot down there, and a nice felt padded interior. Hey, just a general overview here. You know, you got a, a nice leather. It's all soft touch. Hey, yeah, just a beautiful view. And that dome view of that motor, that engine hood, is just beautiful. All right. Now, um, I want to show you the heads up display, but before I do that, real quick, if I go up here, I hope you can pick it up on the camera, but you have got. Um, this is where, where like your um, OnStar and SOS stuff is all set up. It's in your mirror. Okay? Your uh, home link buttons are located on the driver's visor. Okay? And these visors are illuminated on both sides. And if I pull them out, they are telescoping. Okay? And then they flip way up if you want them to. All right, let's take a look at this beautiful heads-up display. All right, so here is uh, the heads-up display. Now, we've taken the sales ticket off the car because it's so sunny out, you can't, you can't see it in the camera. I can see it plain as day. But basically, you've got the three buttons. So this, this one here is going to raise and lower it, okay? So you can get it way above the hood. You can put it down into the hood if you want, wherever is more comfortable for you. The second button is the info button, so as I click through that, it changes what is displayed. Okay, so quite a few different modes. And then this last button on the right affects the brightness or the dimness of the switch. And it looks, uh, it actually looks just beautiful. It's just, yeah, it's outstanding when you sit in the car and, and do it. Now remember, inside the infotainment screen I showed you, uh, under settings, you can t tw twist this or tilt it left or right. If it doesn't look straight to you, you can tilt it. So you have lots of adjustments to make. All right. You do have do two dome lights right in the front here. And so we're going to step over to the passenger side real quick. And we're going to take a look at the passenger seat and then uh, show you a little bit of the back. Okay, on the door handle, you're gonna to wanna to stick your finger inside. There's a soft uh, rubber uh, touch piece, and it just pops the door right open. Okay, so you have the same uh, eight-way power on this side. You got the same type of seat. It's a beautiful, very comfortable seat right here. And then in the back, here's what you can see. So you got a nice carpeted area. You can, it's a kind of a reach through, so you can store a lot of things in here. Um, Rob, gave you the uh, number of square feet that are in here um, but it's 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 fairly large especially for uh, you know uh, two people right and then uh, we're just gonna come back over here and just give an overview it's a beautiful car oh my goodness optional on this Corvette would be a performance data recorder and this records video and audio of your drive. And each drive mode uh, will select a different type of recording and different type of data, but there are up to 34 channels of performance data that can be recorded. It can be also used in valet mode to record another person driving your car. Now, as far as headroom goes, yeah, I think I'll be okay. And even with the top, you, you, you can get a little better video here of, of where that top is. So even with my hat, I'm going to clear it with the, uh, with the top on the car. Um, as far as leg space um, here in the front, oh my gosh, yeah, absolutely plenty. So not going to be a problem being comfortable in this Corvette. All right, we hope you enjoyed this review, and we'll see you on our next one. Okay, so my favorite thing of this whole entire car, there's so many, but if you look, and I don't know if I'm really getting it shaded in art, but you'll see the little emblem here on the center console that says Grand Sport. It's, the, it's a badge 
but if you look closely, the shape of the badge on the far right side is one of the original Corvettes. And you can see it's just a little two-seater, like a uh, early 50s or uh, late 50s Corvette. And it's followed by where it says Grand Sport. That's such a cool little detail. Absolutely love it. That's my favorite thing. And my absolute favorite thing was the sound of this car's exhaust. 